All right, well, you've played the Genesis version and maybe the Switch or Dreamcast version too, but today is the day that we can finally take a long awaited look at Xeno Crisis for the console that is bigger, badder, and better than all the rest, the Neo Geo. So yeah, this was a long time coming. I want to say it's probably been two years or so since I've ordered this. I was just sitting around and waiting very impatiently for the Neo Geo version to drop. Bitmap Bureau was kind enough to send me the Genesis Press ROM so I could play that and it hold me over until this came. So I will say that I'm pretty familiar with the game already. So for starters, I did buy the MVS Limited Edition. So that's what we'll be looking at today. It isn't lost on me at all that I just did a video on Crowdbuster talking about whether or not you should buy new games in physical form for old systems. And if you watch that video, I kind of ended up a bit of a pessimist about that concept, mostly due to cost, but we'll see if this changes my mind. So like any good MVS kit, this one comes in a cardboard box just like the arcade releases of years gone by. I guess we can go ahead and address the label now since it's on the box as well as the cart. Bitmap Bureau gave the MVS version a nicely colored label with graphics and metallic sheen. Now this is in contrast to the traditional black and white labels found on Neo Geo kits from back in the day. A few purists have since argued that they should have gone black and white to really drive home the MVS kit authenticity though. So this is tough. I really could go either way on this one. NG Dev is doing the same thing and placing colored graphic labels on their MVS versions as well. So you could just look at this as an improvement over the original format, or you could take the hard stance that it's better left plain and rugged. And me personally, I, I really don't care either way. I would have been perfectly fine with the black and white label for the reasons I just noted, but I also don't mind the upgraded look either. This topic is a push for me. Inside the box, we have a graphic sticker. Now these would typically be placed on or behind the glass on an arcade machine. I've always thought that someone should reproduce these on vinyl so that they could function as static clings. And then you could add and remove them pretty quickly and change the look of your machines easily. Next up are the dip setting sheets. And again, classic inclusion for any MVS kit. One of these is in English and the other is in Spanish. Nothing overly remarkable aside from the fact that they included them as an homage. You'll notice the corners are a bit wrinkly. These are not mint. And that is because these were just laying bare on the bottom of the box that everything shipped in. And that box was not treated too kindly en route to my house. And as a result, unfortunately, these were somewhat of a casualty. Continuing with MVS kit tradition are the two art flyers. One of these highlights a few additional moves within the game, while the other is an enlarged version of the mini marquee. So spoiler, here's the actual mini marquee. It's not the same materials as the originals. Only one side has that glossy plasticky feel to it. The other side with the print is a little more matte. And as you can see, the print is a bit subdued. I was concerned about this at first, but it's fine when lit from the back like it should be. There are also six postcards included in the set. I'm not really sure what I'd ever do with these, but I suppose they're nice to have. While four of these feature artwork from the game, the other two are hand drawn and are the real standouts in my opinion. This is a good thing because the artwork on both of these cards is also included in too many posters. So you get two blown up versions of these as well. It's nice that one is vertical and the other is a horizontal laid out for a little bit of variety. Next, and I'm assuming this is for those who pre-ordered the limited edition set, you get two dog tags commemorating the collector's edition of Xeno Crisis. And finally, something I'm always a fan of, physical media containing the game soundtrack. And I know we haven't talked about the game all that much yet, but the soundtrack by Savage Regime is spectacular on this. Also, if you're a real diehard, this is available on vinyl on the Bitmap Bureau website. All right, we've already talked about the labels, so there's no need to repeat that as far as the cart goes. 
but I did want to call attention to two other stickers on the shell that are nice nods back to how Neo Geo games originally shipped. Here's the warning sticker on the back of the cartridge and the silver serial sticker on the side. All right, so that's all the actual physical cart stuff that comes with the kit. Let's talk about some nuances with the game itself. Xeno Crisis has been out for a while on Genesis, which is the only platform I have played it on prior to getting the Neo Geo version. Immediately, I can say it's different. The promise of the game being enhanced for the Neo Geo over the Genesis version feels evident upon first play. Perhaps it's because I'm overly familiar with the Genesis version, but for me it was relatively easy to note the added color depth, some extra animation on different sprites, and the enhanced sound on the Neo version. Beyond that, with this being an arcade title, you have the game's attract mode, the ability for a second player to join in at any time, memory card support, and all of that good hardware stuff. The game controls very differently from how I play this on the Genesis as well, and I think this may be the key piece of discussion. The Neo Geo only has four buttons, unlike the Genesis, which can go to six. And this means that the Neo Geo version controls very similarly to Shock Troopers. You basically push a direction on the stick and tap the fire button to shoot in that direction. This is different than a twin stick shooter format where a button is mapped for each of the directions. Smash TV might be the most well-known version of how you might ideally want this to control. But this is not a true twin stick shooter on the Neo Geo. So there are some control mechanisms tossed in to help alleviate this. Notably, while firing, you can press and hold the A or C buttons to make your character rotate counterclockwise or clockwise, respectively. I found this most helpful during a particular boss battle where you must move in motion with the boss to avoid damage. In real-time regular play, though, I did struggle to consistently put the rotation to good use. And I'll also note that it's not quite as effective when you need to do a full 180, say firing from north to south. On Smash TV, you would just yank the stick down and be firing. On Xeno Crisis, your character is going to have to waste a little time turning and spraying bullets as they rotate. It's subtle, but it does make a difference. But the twin stick issue goes back to the Neo Geo only having four buttons. Aside from firing your weapon, you can roll, lob a grenade, and melee attack and all of those actions are mapped to the three remaining buttons. But if you recall, I also just said that A and C rotate your character when firing. So this can get a little messy when you're playing the game. There are times when I've gone to lob a grenade and I haven't quite let go of the B button, and so my character rotates rather than tossing out the grenade. And the same thing happens with A when attempting to roll. In short, it's tough being constricted to the four buttons and having multiple actions mapped to them. It definitely gets confusing at times, and the later levels of this title are already difficult as it is, and this just adds another layer of complexity. Now, I've seen posts of people making some convoluted sticks and setups for this game, and firstly, kudos to them for wanting to do that for one game. I just don't have the patience or investment in this quite like that. Secondly, with regards to the Neo Geo version specifically, you have to understand that you can't just simply make this a twin stick game that controls like Smash TV. The root of that issue goes back to what I just mentioned. There are no single one-to-one -one mappings that allow your character to fire in any of the compass directions. I've seen really clever ways around this challenge, but really, they're workarounds to the source of the problem. There's no one-for-one -one mappings. That rant aside, I will say that the gameplay is responsive, it's slick, and it's fast, like the Genesis version, so it's imperative that your character controls in a snappy fashion as well. Now, thankfully, that is true, albeit with some of the caveats that we just mentioned around the controls. So visuals overall are pretty great. Like I've already noted, you have some added effects and a deeper color palette helping things out here. The controls are... <laughs> They're okay, they suffice and do a good job if you consider the four button layout that was here to work with. So I guess audio is up next and this is where the Neo Geo version really shines. Now I will note there is indeed an audio issue with the game when played on the Unibios, which unfortunately is probably a lot of you out there, myself included. 
The stereo mixing is off and it makes the game sound weird. And I, I didn't notice it really with my less than stellar TV speakers. But when I pop this into the big red with the amp mod and speaker upgrade that I did, it's not great. And thankfully there is an easy patch for this to solve it, but it has to be applied every time you boot the game. Bitmap Bureau is working on a solution that will allow owners to get their carts reflashed with the proper code for free, however. So yes, the audio on this is fantastic. It really rocks on the Big Red, and I absolutely love the soundtracks that have been done for each of the stages. There are also more voice samples, and the quality of those feel more crisp as well. The audio overall is a huge plus for this title. It's simply stellar and is really showcased well on the Neo Geo. So overall, I have really enjoyed playing this game on the Neo Geo and having the ability to pop it into the big red cabinet is amazing. But maybe the best thing I can say about this is that it does truly feel like an arcade game from decades gone by. It's Fast and Furious pace is only amped to another level when introducing a second player. The game is hard, however, at least it is for me. But the difficulty level feels appropriate and the boss battles do have patterns that are recognizable, allowing you to learn and grow with the game. So it isn't an unfair type of hard and I think that that's a really important thing to note. There are a decent number of weapons, enemies, and room layouts to keep things fresh and make you adapt your strategies to. I know I talked a little about the shortcomings with the controls on this one and I do honestly feel like that is maybe a small ding to playing this on the Neo Geo. But overall, you can't help but have a blast with this, even if the controls aren't quite ideal. Now the big question, is it worth buying new games for old hardware? And this is tough because unlike Crowdbuster, which I never really attached to, I do genuinely like Xeno Crisis. Bitmap Bureau is doing this right too. The game is available for so many different platforms, including Genesis, Steam, Switch, PS4, Dreamcast, Neo Geo CD, Hell, even Evercade, whatever that is. And what I really love is that these guys are going to offer a downloadable Neo Geo ROM for sale too eventually, just like they've done with Genesis and the disc images for Dreamcast. So I'm kind of dodging the question a little, but I suppose the point here is that unlike Crowdbuster, anyone who wants to play this most likely can because it's available in so many formats you don't have to spend hundreds of dollars on the Neo Geo version or be left out in the cold like you would with some of the NG Dev games. The ROM and disc image pricing for this is just a little more than 20 US dollars and quite honestly, the Genesis version with the six button layout might still be my preferred way to play this game despite the wow factor that the Neo yields on the cabinet. Now, I do really want to get a hold of the Switch version at some point and try that out too, Probably need a Nintendo Switch before that happens, but that should speak volumes about how fun this game really is to play. So final thoughts are that this really deserves to be played in a true twin stick setup like I've hinted at so many times throughout this video, but getting the added punch of the Neo's hardware and the overall arcade presentation that's been added to this for play in a cabinet make up for the B plus-ish Shock Troopers control style. Ultimately, I'm still very happy I got the Neo Geo MVS kit version, and I'm looking forward to seeing what Bitmap Bureau puts out in the future. But that's it for today, guys. Let me know in the comments what system you've been playing Xeno Crisis on. Drop your thoughts and opinions down below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will catch you all next time. Later, guys.